Dear Faithful, You probably know that Our Lady of Akita is the name with which the Catholic Church venerates the Virgin Mary, following the apparitions that occurred in 1973 in Akita, Japan, by Sister Agnese Sasagawa of the Order of the Servants of the Eucharist. The apparition was approved and Cardinal Ratzinger, at the time Prefect of the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith, stated that it constituted a continuation of Fatima. With this video, we will talk about the message from heaven received by the nun, regarding the way to receive communion and in what way the host of the Eucharist should be received. In that place, several extraordinary events of a supernatural nature occurred, and today he is mainly remembered for his last message, dated October 13th, the day of the miracle of the sun in Fatima. On this occasion, there was a warning that the work of the devil would infiltrate the church, generating conflict and persecution of faithful priests unless men repented. One of the important messages received concerned the preference regarding the method of receiving the Eucharist, whether in the hand or in the mouth, an aspect often overlooked but also much debated. But first, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel and activate the little bell. If possible, please share this video with as many people as you can. By doing so, you'll be helping us spread our messages of faith and hope. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Let's continue. On May 12, 1973, Agnes Sasagawa, aged 42, entered the novitiate of the Institute of the Servants of the Holy Eucharist, who led a life of quiet and hidden prayer in a convent on the outskirts of the city of Akita. Agnes was a woman who converted from Buddhism to Christianity and was completely and irremediably deaf. A month later, on June 12, 1973, the first miraculous event occurred in Akita while Sister Agnes was praying. A brilliant light emerged from the tabernacle several times, often accompanied by something similar to smoke, which enveloped the statue of Our Lady. Sister Agnesi approached the statue and suddenly felt that the wooden statue came to life. It was surrounded by a brilliant light, and the sister was attracted more and more by it. He also saw many angel-like creatures surrounding the altar adoring the host, as he would see at other times during prayer. On the afternoon of June 28, Agnes discovered a cross-shaped wound in the palm of her left hand, which caused her extreme pain. On the 5th of July, a small hole appeared in the center of the hand from which blood began to flow. After that, the pain diminished for most of the week, except Thursday evening and all of Friday, when it became almost unbearable. As predicted by the guardian angel, the wound disappeared on Friday the 27th of July without leaving a trace. This painful wound made it impossible for Sister Agnes to receive Holy Communion on the hand, as was customary at the time. On the 6th of July, 1973, the first Friday of the month, at three in the morning, her guardian angel appeared to her, telling her to pray not only for her sins, but also for the sins of humanity. The angel told her that the current world wounds the sacred heart of Jesus with its ingratitude and its outrages. Once in the chapel, the angel disappeared, and Sister Agnesa knelt before the altar, in front of the tabernacle, in deep adoration. Then he approached the statue of the Virgin Mary and noticed that it had a mark like a cross-shaped wound on its right hand. Suddenly, she heard a sweet voice coming from the statue, telling her that she would be healed of her deafness, urging her to pray for the Pope as well as for the bishops and priests. In fact, Sister Agnes was definitively healed of her deafness during the blessing with the Blessed Sacrament on the day of Pentecost, the last Sunday of May. 1982. The following morning, after the first apparition, during the recitation of lauds, the nuns found blood on the statue's right hand. The wound coincided with the one on Sister Agnes's left hand, with the difference that, since the statue's hand was smaller, the wound was smaller. 
The statue bled every Friday in July of the year 1973, as did the wound on Sister Agnes's hand. On August 3rd, Sister Agnes received a second message from the Virgin, which stated that many men in this world afflict the Lord, and she desired more strength in prayer to mitigate his wrath. He asked for the help of souls who would repair the horrors of ungrateful sinners with their humility and suffering. As a preview to the message of October 13th, the Virgin also reported that the Heavenly Father was preparing to inflict a great punishment on all humanity in the future. Our Lady added that with her Son she intervened several times to appease the Father's wrath, preventing the arrival of calamities, offering Him the sufferings of the Son on the cross, His precious blood, the sufferings of the beloved victim souls, prayer, penance and the sacrifices of the faithful. Afterwards, the statue first sweated and subsequently cried 101 times in front of thousands of spectators. Many of these events were also broadcast live on television. The bishop at the time, John Shojiro Ito, subsequently sent samples of sweat, tears, and blood to be analyzed, obtaining confirmation of the human nature of the substances and genetically different from those of the nun. However, what interests us in this case is to analyze the message behind the bleeding of Sister Agnes's left hand and the statue's right hand. The left hand is the one with which one receives communion, while the right hand is the one with which one gives communion. During these apparitions, Agnes had a stigmata on her left hand, while the statue of the Madonna had another on her right hand, both in the shape of a cross. Therefore, Bishop Shojiro Ito interpreted the double sign of blood on the hand of the nun and on the hand of the statue as a refusal of the Madonna to be able to exercise communion in the hand. From that moment on, the entire convent began to receive communion in the mouth. Previously, in 1970, in Japan, there had been a vote of the bishops that allowed communion in the hand. The discussion focused on the message that should be given to the faithful on the real presence of Jesus Christ in the consecrated host. But three years later, Our Lady, through Sister Agnes, told them that this was wrong. Today, although this is a much debated topic, religious analysts ignore too much these events of Akita, who condemns communion in the hand, despite Sister Agnes and the bishop having repeatedly stated that this was an important aspect in the message of Our Lady. Communion in the hand had been introduced in 1969 as a special permission from Pope Paul VI for Western countries, where there were many Protestants accustomed to receiving communion in the hand, for example, coming from Calvinism. Subsequently, the request and permission spread to all countries, and the position of the Church although preferring communion in the mouth, today leaves complete freedom of action, thus generating confusion among the ministers of the church themselves and mistrust among the faithful. However, many priests and bishops act as if it were the opposite, and some even ban oral communion and the act of kneeling. Unfortunately, this trend has been accentuating lately. With this message from the apparitions of Akita, we wanted to open a reflection by asking you to write in the comments what you think, and above all, by asking if your parish priest prefers that the faithful receive communion on the hand, in the mouth, or is indifferent to the issue. Thank you very much and may God bless you.